On this music production tutorial, I'm going to show you how to chop up samples and slice samples in Ableton. So I have my track pulled up. It's called Irish Drinking Song, Yay Lay Low. I'll play you a little bit of it. I know some shameless self-promotion, but... Then goes into this. So it's kind of like a fun mini like combination of folk music, Irish music, uh, you know, just like a fun random song I decided to throw together. But anyway, getting to the main point of this video, I got this sample from Splice. I'm going to play it for you. Right, and I love that. And one thing I will say as a side note, and this is very important for this video, if you get a sample like this, a big thing is to chop it up and just do something with it to make it more unique. Because if you just drop this in a track, it's not as original as if you did something more interesting with it, which is what I did here, as you can see. So I'll play you this now. Right? Now, getting into the first part of this video, I find there's two different ways you can chop up a sample overall. One is manually, as I like to call it. The second is automatically, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the sample and I can adjust the beginning or the end going here and dragging this way. So I can start it here, right? And if I want to, let's say, do it more specifically, I can do this. So this way now, as you can see, I can start to chop it up, but more on the sides of it. So, or let's say I want to trim the end. Now, next thing I can do in terms of chopping is to go in the middle or click at a point and then copy and paste. That's what I did here. Again, this is kind of tedious, but the more you do it, the more you just kind of get used to it. So if I go here, so let's say like this, I'm going to click here and drag up and going to do command C. I'm on a Mac, but basically uh, I'm going to copy it and boom. Now I have a section of it copied out. One big thing I'm going to suggest is if you are doing uh, like chopping and, and slicing and everything, leave the full sample maybe off to the side and don't edit this one. That way you can kind of click and drag pieces over, but you're not affecting this one here. Because if I do this, then I might forget about the beginning, right? So now I have this. So now I can do, I'm just going to show you as an example, is I can go here. I can now maybe do this. Now I can copy and paste this as well. So I like that. So now I can drag on top of it. And you can kind of see this process. And sometimes, honestly, this is just copy and pasting, taking things out, rearranging it, doing weird stuff just to see what works and what doesn't. So I have this now. And then now this is where I might get interesting. So I'm already pitching this down. But let's say I'm going to do like... Uh, uh, but I could always do this, right? And then, again, you can kind of see what this process is going. So this is how I'm chopping them up. I would start then kind of messing with what would be interesting if I'm doing any transposing. You know, uh, I might then go back to here and go, okay, I like this. Um, and maybe do something like that, right? So, again, I'm just kind of messing around. Uh, maybe something like this, actually. And then maybe even repeat that, right? So this is kind of where the creative process comes into play is figure out where do you want to start this one particular arrangement. And as you can see here, this is the way I decided to do it, at least for this particular record. Uh, starting. Right. And then in the mix, as you heard before, it comes out like this. So that's one way to do it, is, is why it's called manually splicing it, or slicing it. I, I keep mixing up splice and slice because of splice. Uh, but anyway, the second way now is the automatic way. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a MIDI track. And I'm going to go here to simpler, like so. I'm going to click this. I'm going to click the sample itself. Go back here, and I'm going to drag it in. Boom. So now I have this, and I'm treating this almost like an instrument. This is also very popular when you hear 
a lot of future bass music and electronic, like Marshmallow and those kind of artists, uh, Skrillex and Diplo do this a lot with like Jack U, where you have like this kind of like vocal melody. Uh, I'm not even going to try to recreate it with my voice, but you have like a vocal melody where they treat a vowel or a singing note as an actual instrument. So if I play this now, right? Right, so now you can already kind of hear, I can treat this almost like a mini instrument. And I'm gonna go down here and go to Slice. Already, you can see this, and I have a MIDI controller right here that I have pads, so. Right, and this is where a lot of people, especially in hip hop, will take something like this, set different markers, you can kind of see with the, uh, the blue lines right here, and add it to a specific pad. So they can start doing this, whether it's on like, you know, an NPC or whatever kind of piece of equipment they're using, so. Now, obviously, these are set automatically, hence the name of this. Right. Now, I can go down here to go to Slice By, and I can go Transient, B, so you can see it's more evenly, almost quantized in a sense, Region, and then Manual. So, I can add them in here, you know, I can do this in a few different ways. So, let's say I have a beat now. But remember, Ableton is trying to guess automatically of where these markers should go. But let's say I'm like, all right, for, let's see this one. I might like this better. Right. And so this is where you can kind of then trim these, you know, and figure out where I want to add in maybe even more of them, you know, by double clicking and uh, there it is, yeah. And that's where it gets more to this, like I call, like automatic style of slicing, where maybe what you're going to do is then record this and maybe record yourself playing it or maybe even add in the uh, the notes themselves by doing this. And then I can add in the notes here to try to trigger each one. So if I want to do like, I don't know, I'll just do that. Uh, uh, let me put this down. Where, where are they? Let's see. Right, so I have this now, right? And obviously each one corresponds to a specific note, but look at it almost as a section in this in particular. Another cool pro tip is you can also record this. So I'm gonna go back here when I have this. There was a couple. Right, so let's say I'm gonna record that. What I can do is instead of typing in the mini notes, you're like, wait, what note was this one particular part? I can click here, click record, and then Right. Now, obviously, that's pretty offbeat. Now, I can go here and trim these in particular if I want to quantize it more. If I also want to adjust the velocity, because you can see, because I'm obviously a human, playing this, the, the uh, velocity or the intensity that each note is played out is a little bit different. I can fine-tune it, and that's how you do it.